now more than ever, we need to feel good because when we feel good, we can take all that delicious energy and use it for good, especially in our wonderful world, which needs a lot of good right now. Our guest knows all about how to feel good and help you feel good with her business and through how she's empowering others to use their voice for good. It's going to be a feel good conversation. So stay tuned for the Start of Life live show. Let's glow, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Start of Life live show. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, four times founder and startup champion to founders around the world. And after raising four businesses of my own, I know firsthand what you're going through every single day. I'm sure you're sleeping like a baby at night, right? Waking up every two hours crying sometimes. It is an extraordinary journey. And between the high levels of uncertainty and the high levels of joy, it is a roller coaster ride. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for carving out time to up your founder game. Because as you do better, your startup will do better. And thank you for sharing your like love on this video, wherever you're watching. We're live on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube. And so that like button helps us reach more founders. And you who hello, live viewers that are here also for replay viewers. So happy you're here. And my podcast listeners, gosh, thank you for downloading and tuning in. And again, upping your founder game by watching the show and listening to the show. If you're tuning in from YouTube, please share your subscribe love and I click on the bell icon. And how do you know when I post a new show? Well, you join the Startup Life Live meetup group right here. You can scan that QR code, click that link in the show notes, but hop on over and join the meetup group because that way you'll receive an alert whenever I post a new show. And there's going to be a founder, investor, or an expert that you're going to benefit from grabbing their gems. Okay. Um, and I don't know, you heard me say hello to the podcast guests. That's right. You can listen to the Startup Life Live show wherever you find your podcast platform and via the website. And if you resonate with the show's mission, of amplifying diverse founder voices while serving first-time founders around the world, please reach out to me to learn more about how you can make a greater impact in the startup ecosystem through sponsorship of the show. Okay, so I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest. I'm calling her the feel good so you can do good goddess, Brittany Driscoll. Let me just pull up one of the brick and mortar places that we're gonna be talking about today with her amazing business called Squeeze. Brittany is the co-founder and CEO of Squeeze, a way better massage experience from the founders of Dry Bar, the folks who gave us gals an entire product line for a perfect blowout. In fact, Brittany was the person who took Dry Bar from 30 billion to more than 100 million in revenue and Squeeze's revolutionary app-based booking and payment platform makes scheduling, paying, tipping, and rating easy peasy so you can simply float out with the ability to tip and rate your therapist at your leisure. And hey, I just want to say this, that isn't all our guest is about. She's not only a female entrepreneur, but she's a cancer survivor and wellness advocate and has a deep passion for supporting other women in business and has become a thought leader in her community. So I am so excited to bring her onto the show. Hello, Brittany. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for having me. What a fun introduction. I'm happy to be here. Well, you know, you're the goddess who helps people feel good and do good because uh, you talk about that. You talk about how feeling good allows us to then share that out into the world and have more energy to do good. And that self-care is so important, especially as you and I both know for women who tend to put themselves last in the list of folks that need taking care of, right? Absolutely. You know, I'm such a big believer that we all want a bigger purpose than ourselves. And we want to feel like, 
you know, for me in particular, not only are we making people feel good, but there is a do good aspect to the business as well. So yeah, it's a very special place to, you know, to exist within. Um, right. And I'm, you know, very excited as we continue to grow and scale. Well, before we dive into some of my things, I love to ask, you know, where are you hailing from? Yes. I am currently in Nashville and back and forth between here and LA quite a bit. Excellent. And folks tuning in live, let us know where you're hanging from. Um, I'm also very curious about how you were called to become empowered, you know, about empowering women, because this is, you know, we go through different events and lived experiences in our lives that give us that greater mission. And I love it, what you just said, how we feel better when we are working toward a greater good yeah. while we take care of ourselves, of course. And so I just, I'm curious as to what started you on that path? Why did you go even deeper into caring about folks having a voice and women stepping into their authority and their voices? I think, you know, I've always had a passion for people. I love championing uh, you know, people really on any journey, but particularly as I've grown in my career, you know, women in particular have just been, uh, I've been championed by amazing women. I've had incredible women who've worked for me. And then my time at Dry Bar. So I spent about four years running marketing for Dry Bar and helping them to, you know, achieve the scale that, that everyone, you know, experiences today. But the idea of kind of this feel good mission really came from, from dry bar. We always used to say that we weren't selling blowouts. We were selling the happiness and confidence that came with a blowout. And when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can take on the world. And so, you know, I think that journey and that experience really lit a fire inside of me to just continue to be a part of championing women. And, yeah. you know, this, the transition to squeeze, uh, squeeze was really the brainchild of the dry bar founders. They had always wanted to get a massage concept off the ground and didn't have the bandwidth of course, because they were scaling and building dry bar. And I had gotten to a point in my career where I was just like itching for a new challenge. I've always been an entrepreneurial spirit. And when they kindly really gave me the opportunity to run with it, you know, the, the idea of creating a service, again, that really allows people to show up as their best selves was exciting. And then there's so many other components, which I'm sure we'll Yeah, we're going to dive into that for oh. sure. Um, yeah, I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to dive into some of the things that power you, not as just an entrepreneur, but as a human in the world who wants to create that ripple effect of good and, and to find out how you get through that. And especially since you have survived cancer, which is always you know a very deep blow and makes one acutely aware of their time here on the planet. Yes. So yeah, it's definitely a, you know, a soul shaking uh, realization that, yes. you know, things can change so quickly overnight. My husband is also a cancer survivor. And so, Oh my you know, gosh, the two of you. Yeah, multiple moments in our life where we had, you know, we really had to step back and evaluate yeah. what was important. How do we want to show up? What do we want to allow to define us? And I think that's one of the things that I, you know, admire a lot, particularly about my husband. He had a, a harder battle than I did. You know, he just showed up every single day with the mindset of, you know, this isn't going to control or define my life. I'm just yeah. going to get through it. I'm going to battle and get to the other side. So yeah, there's definitely a, there's a mindset shift for sure. With yeah. And it helps you. And then certainly it prepared you to be a founder in the sense that when you're not willing to give up, so to speak, you're going to do whatever it takes. That means you're building tenacity and resilience and persistence muscles that are beyond anything. And um, I'm so happy. Everybody doing well now? Yes, thank you. We are all healthy. Yes, because I know people are going to be asking, how are they today? <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are years past the, the hard, hard times, thankfully. So Yay. Well, I want to remind everybody tuning in, if you're here live, be sure to amplify your brand, share your business name, your one-liner, and your URL in the comments, and we'll go woo -hoo -hoo. And whenever you comment on the live show, you have an opportunity to win. I'm always giving away things during the show. And I am probably going to give away this today, right here, a free copy of Arlen Hamilton's book. It's about damn time, the best guide for entrepreneurs and really for anyone pursuing a dream. She's amazing. And I'm going to say a quick hi to 
Mark Jameson. What a great concept. I agree. You know, we don't talk about franchising enough. We don't talk about, you know, massage and creating something that is brick and mortar with the accompanying app that goes with it to create a great experience. So I'm thrilled, Mark, that you're here chiming in. Hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go into the origin story because, you know, some founders are like me, the reluctant entrepreneur that just or accidental entrepreneur that started to fall into one business after another. But you were recruited, as you said earlier, by the founders of Dry Bar to help it scale. And, you know, and you created outstanding results. Um, what, you know, how did that come about? How did you hone the skill that you knew how to drive because it's everybody's dream to hire someone like you, every founder's dream. Hey, can you come in and just really help us scale to a hundred million? What, it, what had you learned along the way that made you so passionate about this area? Yeah. I mean, I think tenacity has always been in my DNA for mm -hmm. sure. You know, the, the underdog story, the idea of achieving something that hasn't yet been done uh, has always been a motivation factor. Even back from childhood, I was mm -hmm. a, um, you know, successful swimmer. I went into playing basketball in my high school days, hadn't touched a ball in my entire life up until that point, you know, and worked my way to motivating the team all through college or all through high school. So I feel like, you know, there's, there's a lot of lessons along the way, dots that I can connect back and in, in seeing where I am today. But yeah, the origin story of Squeeze is, you know, ultimately it came down to a frustration with something that didn't exist within the market. And uh, you know, I will, will always say that the best business ideas come out of personal necessity. If you are out there and you have an idea for something that you wish existed, there's probably a very good chance that there are many, many other people out there who wish uh, the same thing. And so that was really the case with Squeeze. When we view our positioning in the market landscape, you know, on one end are the discount chains that really, I always like to say to their credit, made massage accessible to the masses 15 to 20 years ago, but lack a lot from a consumer experience standpoint today. And then on the other side, you've got the high end hotels and spas, which are lovely, but unattainable for a regular experience. And that was kind of the case with Dry Bar as well. So what we did was we used the same creative team, the same architectural team who are brilliant in terms of creating just approachable brands and surprise and delight experiences. And we brought in that affordable price point. So we sit as an affordable luxury within the massage category. Right. And our biggest differentiation beyond that, beyond the beautiful brand and the modern design, uh, is our technology. As you were mentioning earlier, we've built out a platform that enables our guests to do everything from book an appointment, set all their personalized preferences, things like areas of the body they want focused on, what they want avoided, if they want more or less pressure, if they want their table heated. All that information is saved to your profile prior to the guest walking in. The therapist can review it. Exactly. It can be done on an app or uh, on our website. And Excellent. And we've got additional personalization elements within the space as well. So guests can choose from different aromatherapy. We have an interactive aromatherapy bar. They can choose from six different playlists within. We call our rooms suites. We've oh, so it's not random when you go in, which I love that. Well, exactly. It's, you know, we really wanted to make this experience convenient, but also personalized, you know, really catering to not only what they want, within the massage preferences themselves, but also how can we help make the overarching environment, which we all know is huge from an experience standpoint, you know, as personal as possible. Guests can also, you know, choose to dim the lighting in their room. And then as you mentioned, uh, oh, and I should mention one other piece, we have a ready button on the table. So the guest actually lets the therapist know when they're ready for them to re-enter. And then as you mentioned, yeah, exactly. Great tip would be like Uber and Postmates. So really when you think about it, you know, there's no clunky checkout lines. There's no operating right. exchanges. It's all very seamless. So let me ask you this. I, and when the founders at Dry Bar said, we've been wanting to do this for a while. I mean, really the assets that you need, the capital intensive assets you need for a brick and mortar are a whole different story, but they were coming from a very successful space. Were they able to, you know, and with you along with them, able to bootstrap this adventure themselves or get, you know, the kind of funding, did they use other people's money or banks? You know, how did they pull this together? Because it's a very um, ambitious undertaking to yes, create I mean something that 
is not held in your hand. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Brick and mortar and also a technology platform. Required. Yeah, combined, sure. Uh, yeah, it was a mix of both. We raised a friends and family round. We yeah. haven't gone, you know, institutional and or, or um, taken on debt at this point. But, you know, because of the success of Drybar, we were thankfully able to leverage our investor relation chips uh, to get the business off of the ground. Yeah, that's extraordinary. And it sounds like you, of course, have some strong leadership and team playing skills and drive from your background. But had you ever done anything entrepreneurial before this? Not in the traditional sense. I always say that I've always been an entrepreneurial spirit, um, you know, an example of that. And I give this only because if there's anyone out there who's working in corporate America right now who has never really envisioned themselves as a true entrepreneur, but you can kind of draw the parallels, I would say, like, don't limit yourself. Um, before Drybar, I worked in advertising and I had a chance to work with amazing brands, Coca-Cola, Disney, Hilton, uh, Barbie and Hot Wheels were clients of mine for nearly nice. half of a decade. And when I was working at my advertising agency at the time, I was working on Toyota and AAA. I was doing their direct mail. This was, you know, 15 years ago. And um, as, as insightful as that was, it wasn't super, you know, sexy or exciting to me. And my office actually looked out at Mattel's building every day. And I thought, gosh, it would be so much more fun to work on yeah. Hot Wheels. Um, so I figured out, I mean, the, here's like the entrepreneurial spirit in me, you know, I figured out how can we work with them? I knew I would love it. I knew I would be so excited to show up for work every day. I knew our creative team would love doing it. So I figured out what they needed in an agency partner. And at the time, we as an agency didn't have those capabilities. But again, I went to our managing director. We were a part of a larger agency network. And I was like, let's figure out how we can partner with one of our sister agencies, come to the table with these capabilities for Mattel. And and let's do this. And ultimately we did. We basically were their global promotions agency for years and years. And the biggest campaign that we worked on for Hot Wheels was this program called Hot Wheels for Real. Most people don't know that these little toy cars are actually designed to scale. So we built Hot Wheels for Real. We worked with the best race car drivers in the world from Danica Patrick to Mario Andretti. To oh my God drivers and we created this content series online we subverted major athletic events like the indy indianapolis 100 x games broke world records so you know there, there's all sorts of experiences like that i have like that that were really solidifying to me you know if you've got a big vision i mean you think about a toy company putting people's lives at risk like it was a massive thing and so you know you've got a big vision and all of the right people involved really truly anything is possible and then of course going into dry bar really in its you know toddler years if you will and getting it to to scale um you know, I think I just was fortunate to see a lot of magic happen. And I and I loved the, you know, the spirit and the energy that came with that. And and yeah. after all of those experiences, you know, things kind of happened the way that they're supposed to. I felt like I think Oh, I are you kidding, Brittany? Uh, like you were like over prepared <laughs> to do that. Well, I will say, I do want to say though, it's so interesting starting something from scratch. You know even going into squeeze with all of the experience that I had in my corporate days and the exposure certainly at dry bar to opening locations and launching product lines and all the things that came with that. When all of a sudden you're responsible for doing everything, when you had counterparts and different, you know, functions helping you out previously, it is a humbling experience. You know, there's so much to figure out. And again, if you're out there thinking of, of starting something, I would just encourage you to do it and go for it because we, no one has all of the answers. You know, the right. important thing is that you understand why you're starting. You believe in the mission, the vision behind why you're doing what you are. Make sure you know what that is because in the hard times, you can always go back to it. Uh, mm -hmm. But you'll figure it out. You know, I mean, especially if you come from, corporate background to any degree uh, or a pro any professional background, you know, you know, you know, people, good people That's know right. good people and you can always, you know, fill in the tap. Game. Yeah. Tap that network. But I have to, I have to take this stitch of that on a pillow moment for a second, folks. Because the one thing you said, Brittany, that is so important. I'm saying stitch that on a pillow, which is when you have the right team, anything is possible. 
And yeah, you know, the team is those who protect you, like your attorney, insurance broker, accountant, and then those who are helping you build the business. And so when you have that aligned team, especially when you're doing something so complicated, a brick and mortar plus a platform. I mean, the horror stories we hear about just doing apps. Okay, front end, back end, the whole end. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> combined with where are we going to place this? Where's the traffic going to come in? You know, where's the foot traffic? You know, what kind of presence are we going to have? Where are we going to pull from? That sometimes can be a gamble too. So we're going to dive into that very quickly. But first, I just want to say, hey, Rebecca, so happy you're tuning in. Rebecca is a phenomenal coach for female founders. Re uh, Brittany, she's amazing. And she says she loves this idea and leveraging your experience from Dry Bar. Where are you located today? Yes. So our flagship location is in Studio City in Los Angeles. We opened in March of 2019. So we were open for a whopping 11 months before the world had different plans for us. And being in one of the strictest jurisdictions during the pandemic, we were actually closed for about an entire year. Yeah. Um, but we are now planning on scaling squeeze through franchising, which is another huge, you know, entrepreneurial discussion that we can have. It was so important to me that we were, you know, giving other people the opportunity to build this incredible experience in their community with, with the safety net of our support. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And so we've got franchisees in Scottsdale, Dallas, Nashville, San Antonio, Westlake Village, uh, Atlanta. We're, uh, we're going to announce pretty soon here. So, you know. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of folks who tune in from Atlanta. So we got to get the word out for yes, sure. Exactly. So, um, so it is, it's very, very exciting. Um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully many more people will experience the squeeze in the next year or so as we get these locations open. Hey, Brenda, I'm so happy you're tuning in. She says, I can relate to being a person with an entrepreneurial spirit in a corporate world. It is exciting to see that you can make a transition like this one, Brittany. Yay. Okay. Yeah, you totally can. You totally can. You know, I think that um, sometimes we we live in our in our little boxes in our world and we don't, it's hard to, to push outside of them. But, um, and also I think my story too is an example of if you work really hard and you demonstrate, you know, an excitement and tenacity and passion and yeah. capability and all the things, you never know who's really watching that and who's going to give you a potential chance to do yeah. something like this, um, it's, you know, it's, which is a really beautiful thing. It is. And it's also very fulfilling, folks. As hard as this is, and I'll say this again during the show, it's the best personal development program out there because you're going to tap into things that you never knew you could do and you're going to feel so dang proud. So you never lose when you launch a business. And let's just take a moment to celebrate In a Nutshell with Rebecca Moore. Yay! Her handle is at In a Nutshell CEO and she offers a monthly Founders Test Kitchen, which is a live 75-minute peer feedback for first-time and enriched, entrenched female founders to get peer feedback on ideas and she also offers private and group coaching. So folks, this video is evergreen and gets hundreds, sometimes thousands of replays. So what we've just done is amplified Rebecca's business. Come on, that's what we need to do for each other all the time. Congratulations. And yes, Rebecca, we were talking about this before we launched, hit the live button today, Boston. Yes, fingers crossed. If you know anyone who wants to own a squeeze in Boston and become a franchisee, we'd love to get there sooner than later. And we'll be saying that several times today, folks. And Mark's like, there we go. How do we find out about franchisee opportunities? Oh, Mark. Yes. Well placed. Well, well placed. placed. Well placed. Uh, you can go to squeezemassage.com slash franchising. There's a ton of information there on uh, how we help you build the business, the opportunity expectations. There's a form at the bottom of that page. Fill in your information and our team will reach right out. Absolutely. And I'll have all that information in the show notes, folks, for my wonderful replay viewers. Mwah, and of course, my podcast listeners. I know you've been thinking about a franchise that you think that would be an easier way to get started. And that's the beauty of franchise that you start with something that's already been proven, a business model that has already generated income and has the footprint happening. So it's a wonderful way to sort of warm up to being a founder because you are responsible for the outcome. All right. So just like anybody else, you had to figure out, and of course, with your background in advertising, you know that this is so important in marketing, that you had to prove your value prop. You had to prove 
folks wanted this. So before we go into how you did this and what you learned from launching and then launching in a pandemic of all things, ouch, um, what is it about this problem? Like, What did you guys at Dry Bar all see, you gals, uh, that said, oh my God, we can, we can do this so much better. I know because we have here in the Boston area elements and we have other examples of massage places. Yeah. Why did you say this was important to you? Right. And what was that? Because I'm saying this founders, it's so important to fall in love with the problem, not your beautiful solution. Okay. So you have, cause that's what you're working on all the time is the problem. So Brittany, what was it you guys were going after in solving this problem? Yep. Yeah. You know, very similar to dry bar. Uh, we didn't invent blowouts. We didn't invent massage. We just created and our tagline at squeeze is a way better massage experience. So every element that exists within what we've created was designed to address friction and frustration that existed within the current landscape today. So things like not having to pick up a phone to call an individual location, being able to read a therapist's bio, seeing other guests' ratings and reviews, being able to easily book on an app or a website, all the way through to, again, that experience of not having to stand in a line and deal with uh, you know, a checkout process and um, awkward tipping exchanges. There were all of those bits and you know pieces of the experience that existed as it was before Squeeze that we felt like, gosh, you know, the massage itself is great, but everything else about the experience feels unrelaxing. It feels frustrating. It feels stressful and overwhelming. And so those were the points that we realized, gosh, we could make this much better. Yeah, and, you know, like in dry bar and squeeze to things like what Uber did for transportation, what Airbnb did for hospitality, what Postmates did for food delivery. Yes. There's nothing that they were inventing. They were just making the experience much better. And so that's what we've done at squeeze. Well, and the thing too is that I was shocked actually was that why hadn't anybody done that before, right? Why hadn't they made it frictionless? Why hadn't they, why weren't we all using our phones instead, you know, so you could slip in and your, your wonderful therapist, massage therapist, we go, oh, hello, Brittany. Hello, Andy. Come on back. And none of this having to talk to anybody. They already knew what you were there for. What are we focusing on today? Oh, please, dear God, my neck, you know, things like that. And so I actually was a little shocked that that had not been figured out. So you pulled that together. Did you um, bring folks in to help you create the app? Did you use yes. our offshore? How did you handle the technology aspect of it? Well, really quickly to that one point of, you know, why hasn't this existed before, I think is a good reminder again for anyone out there who has an idea. It's like it, taking the leap and doing it is really hard. It's really scary. Putting yourself out there is a big risk, but it's it's well worth it. So, yeah. um, so again, I just encourage people to do it because it's really such a, it's a wonderful experience. And to your point, even if it doesn't pan out exactly the way that you think, like, gosh, what an amazing ride and learning experience trying to build. Right. And, and, and you already, you know, working with the co-founders of dry bar, you already had your experts. You already had the architects, the designers. Yeah. You you knew what you were going for, and you have your refined sensibilities for colors, et cetera. So that was beautiful. But still, everyone, mm -hmm. Squeeze had to meet customers' expectations. They had to prove what they had customers want. How did you what, like? What customer segment were you going after? And I say that meaning because you had to make a decision on location yeah. for everybody. So you had to be very clear about who you wanted to bring in, you know, who your ideal customer was, but also the location that would deliver the foot traffic that you would need. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, our core, our core demo is between 25 and 45, you know, it skews female. We knew, we knew the audience that we were going after, you know, certainly people who are already massage goers who would appreciate an elevated experience like this, but still at an affordable price point. And also for people who, you know, didn't go to those other experiences because of all of those pain points and, you know, the opportunity to really uh, capture those, those guests. So, uh, you know, and certainly from a real estate standpoint, selecting location has a lot to do with, um, 
you know, the demos and, and population within a certain community for sure, but also the co-tenancy, you know, what, yeah. what are people doing in terms of their daily life? Where are they going to the grocery store? Where are they going to get their nails done? Where's dry bar? Where's, you know, the local bank, all of those things really matter in terms of thinking about where we want to be, because ultimately massage should be something that guests are, um, or that anyone that people are are getting at least once a month, and so we wanted to be a part of people's regular routine. That's right, where they're they're going. And folks, they Squeeze already has their differentiator, their phenomenal app that makes it so easy breezy, so you can cu custom make your experience the way you want it. They uh, delight their customers in this way, but. You still had to work, Brittany, with the real estate folks to find out, you know, was is this location available? Are we going to be able to build it out? I mean, I have a dear friend who's doing that for Wayfair now. Wayfair is setting up Amazing. real, you know, brick and mortar locations. So, but, you know, he's got Wayfair behind him. <laughs> yeah. and, but, you know, you had Dry Bar behind you. So how, you know, how is that? working on the, again, brick and mortar. And I bring this up because I want founders to understand where, you know, there's a way, there's a problem, you can solve it. So yeah. how are you guys doing that? Actually, the real estate piece is a great one that you point out in terms of our process and our support for our franchisees. We have a national broker that we work with who works with local brokers on the ground. So there's an overarching um, consistency and approach that we ensure we are taking at, in each market, but uh, but with that local uh, connection and and uh, insight, if you will. So, and we also have a project management team that oversees the construction experience from start to finish because we want our franchisees to really be focusing on the operation, understanding yes. the business, training, hiring their teams. So, you know, that is part of what you get with franchising is the overarching support system that really ensures you are. Uh, you know, armed with the best tools for each function of the business and what it takes to get your your business open. I always say real estate is a real heartbreaker because there's just there is a reality to the landscape, and you know the the size of lo location has to work. Um, all right. the terms have to make sense. It's definitely a process. You brought good minds together, okay, folks. You know, it, I know there are founders out there that have probably have this amazing idea in their head, but they're thinking brick and mortar, I can't even. But what Brittany and her team did is that they brought great minds together so that they could leverage all of their lived experiences to help make the best decision possible in that it's location. Great. It's a great point. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I get to, you know, be the be the face that's speaking about all of this right now, but you brought up technology earlier as well. And, you know, I brought in a a chief operating officer very early on in the business because I didn't have the expertise of building an app. And, you know, there's a lot that we knew from Drybar in terms of the brick and mortar experience, but, you know, incorporating technology piece that was really the foundation of the business, uh, we didn't have experience in. And so we knew we needed to find someone and teams who would be able to offset that. And we did, thankfully, you know, my yeah. chief operating officer is still with me today and the backbone of what we do. Congratulations. And so it is, it's important that you find people who can, you know, really be the yin to your yang and really bring in uh, the expertise that you don't have. Brittany, can we talk just a little bit about customer acquisition costs? Because so many founders, and, and again, thank you for that great information you just gave us there. But with customer acquisition, folks, it, there's a cost to marketing. And some folks think it's like five bucks a head or something. Mm -hmm. You know, no, <laughs> this is a real investment and it's so important. And knowing your return on marketing dollars is also so important. You know, how did you all figure that out? Like what goes into your customer acquisition? And then if we can also talk about what goes into the franchisee acquisition as well. Yeah, well, we built Squeeze to with our franchise partners in mind. So everything that we did, we were testing and learning to ensure that they would be able to replicate, if not, you know, exceed our success. Uh, and so, you know, there's so much that goes into customer acquisition and each channel has a different cost, a different return. We certainly try from just a straight digital advertising standpoint to ensure three times return on ad spend. We try and ensure that with everything that we're spending, the ROI is there from the first visit for the guest. But, you know, the one thing that I would stress from an acquisition standpoint uh, is two things. 
first and foremost, your best marketing channel is always going to be word of mouth. And so what that ultimately means is you need to create an experience that people fall in love with immediately. You know, it pulls on the heartstrings. There's emotion behind everything that you're doing. People recognize the thoughtfulness in what you're creating. It's going to make them immediately a loyal customer and then also, you know, create an experience where they can't help but tell their friends. And whether that's a brick and mortar experience that they're uh, experiencing when they walk in your doors, or it's an unboxing experience, or it's, you know, how they're connecting with you online, whatever that is, the experience needs to be your core focus, build your business from the inside out. I always used to say at Drybar, I wanted to work myself out of a job, tongue in cheek, obviously, as the head of marketing, but specifically because the experience, you can do all of the great marketing you want, but if the experience doesn't deliver against it, then then it doesn't matter. It's wasted dollars. Oh my gosh. Um, Brittany, hold on for a second. I'm having any and do this. Because this is so important, everybody. Again, it's another differentiator. It's your moat that keeps you, you know, the com competition going. I wish we were like them. You're creating an experience. You're creating an emotional connection so that you get all these great brand ambassadors who are, are you going to squeeze it? You're not a member yet? Oh, my gosh. Or, you, you know, this would be a great opportunity for you to, you know, build a business through this wonderful place because the experience is so memorable and it really gets into the heartstrings. So thank you for sharing that yeah. along with the nuts and bolts of customer acquisition costs. Yeah. And and I love the fact that you said your yeah, marketing is nothing, right? If you don't it's, have that experience, Brittany. And you know, the one other piece on customer acquisition that I would say is if you've got a great experience, don't be afraid to give it away for free in the beginning. We that's like all we did at driver in the beginning and squeeze too is you know there's a certain subset of people in your community that you want to come in and experience it again they'll fall in love with it they'll tell their friends so you know don't don't be short-sighted i guess in the beginning with with that idea because it will serve you exponentially in the long run what did i agree a hundred percent what did look giving something away for free look like for squeeze so for Squeeze, it was a massage. For Dry Bar, it was a blowout. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know the most important piece is that people experience what you're offering from start to finish. So whether, again, that's a product that you're sending or an online tutorial or an experience within brick and mortar, uh, in the beginning when you're building it, you know, don't, don't be afraid to give it away for free. Yeah. And yeah, listeners and viewers, you know I'm picking Brittany's brain big time today because she has such a deep experience in everything. I'm trying to squeeze everything out of you. All right. So you have the launch. And before you can really dive deep into that, you know, what are customers going to teach us after we launch? We get hit with a pandemic. And as you said, your launches were all in Southern California, right? Yes. Yeah. Our, our one flagship is in Los Angeles. Yeah, so that's where it got hit hard and got shut down immediately. Like right here with same with us in Massachusetts and of course in our good friends in New York. What happened? What did you and the team do? Because folks, this is they don't talk about this every day in founderhood stories, right? In startup stories, which is where mother nature wipes out your business or a pandemic, something that's inconceivable. You think you've got everything buffered and you're ready to mitigate every risk that comes in, but you didn't have pandemic on your bingo card. How do <laughs> That is for sure. Um, you, know, but, so you guys had to tap into like, oh my gosh, what do we do now? And how long is this going to last? And how do we keep momentum? So yeah, share, please. It's so interesting. I think if I were to, you know, summarize what the pandemic experience brought out in me or really made me recognize was, you know, I think the most successful people are not the most educated. They're not the most experienced. They're not the most well-connected, although connections can go a long way for you they are the most tenacious they are the most persistent they are willing to get up every single day no matter you know the obstacle in front of them and keep going and i so i think the thing that i'm most proud of in what we experienced during the pandemic is we never lost sight of why we started we believed in what we were building and and we just kept going i mean don't get me wrong it was really hard i always when we talk about this topic i want to be you know, transparent for yeah. me personally, it was one of the, the the hardest few years of my life. I've always been a driver and a go getter, and so to have created something that was just about to scale and have it all of a sudden, you know, s stop for a little while, pause it's inconceivable, and especially was, for your personality, because exactly. now you've got to sit there what 
and hang yeah, out. Exactly. I mean, we tried to take advantage of the time. We crossed our T's and dotted our I's and, you know, really made sure that we were set up for, for scale. But there's only so much of that that you can do without actually doing, <laughs> you know, moving forward. So it was, it was very hard, but I'm, I'm very proud of the team and just, you know, again, us like digging our feet in and knowing that we were going to come out of this. And interestingly enough, I think a lot of people feel this way. I actually feel more bullish about our opportunity to grow and scale now than I did back in 2019, particularly because not only do we have, you know, learnings and a lot of the foundations set, but also 80% of Americans are focusing more on their self-care. The massage industry on the labor side is actually growing in comparison to, you know, other service based or, or the labor market in general. Like we're positioned very strongly for growth at this point. So and, and people are ready for this new experience. 100%. Exactly. And, and so Brittany, when were you, did you feel like you had a green light to move ahead? Because, you know, when the shutdown happened, everybody came to, you know, it was a complete halt. Yeah, when did you? It really wasn't until the middle of 2021 that we really started to revamp our, our franchising efforts. Because again, our intention with Squeeze is that we're partnering with great like-minded small business owners who want to bring this to their community. We're not going out and opening additional corporate doors. And that's intentional so that we can yeah. focus on supporting our franchisees. So we really revamped our, um, our efforts to find partners in the middle of last year. And so... Let's talk a little bit about and congratulations to you and the team for you know crawling through that very difficult time and keeping the vision and knowing that you might be in pause for a minute, but not for forever. Yeah. And the silver lining too is that you may have had may um, some more delightful real estate locations and opportunities may have opened up for you, or you're able to get more franchisees because the opportunity of work that they had before is no longer. Or as you said, people have been you know, the great res resignation, um, you know, they're deciding to do something different with their life and you're providing them a pathway for that level of fulfillment. So let's talk about franchisee and let's talk about what is involved in making that decision from day one. You know, you, you shared a little bit in the beginning about how right from the, the start, you were pulling together everything to be a supportive for the franchisee owner. But now, you know, you still have to reach them, have these conversations. How is that going? What is franchising like for a startup? Absolutely. So the, the benefit of franchising is it's a business in a box. You know, we have really outlined step by step, almost paint by number, what is necessary to build and replicate what we what we built at, in Studio City. And so, you know, you've got the support and the the overarching plan from my team, uh, all of our um, partners that we work with in every functional area of the business. What really we're looking for in our operating partners are great operators. You know, we're going to, as the franchisor, build the brand. We're going to maintain um, our innovation status. We're going to ensure that the experience remains best in class um, and deliver all of the tools necessary to execute that. Really what we're looking for in our operators are people who've been successful in business and it can be across you know, many different industries. We have people, uh, franchisees in sales, finance, um, uh, you know, we've got ex Amazon, Coca-Cola executives. It's very exciting. So technology startup, founders or, or executives. So, you know, you can have a, a breadth of experience. The most important thing is that you understand uh, not only the business acumen side of things, but, but how to motivate a team. At the end of the day, we are selling people's time at Squeeze. We have upwards of 30 individuals working for us at each location. So for Squeeze in particular, it's really about knowing how to inspire, connect with people, keep them motivated, uh, and, and wanting to do that, you know, yeah. and also same with same with the community, you know, wanting to build a, um, you know, and, a and, and if someone comes to you and they have, you know, the money is not an issue. Are you still filtering for their ability to have a, to succeed based oh, on? Absolutely. Yeah. It is the most important thing. I will say one of the biggest reasons that I chose to move forward with Squeeze was because uh, I, I think that's an important point, actually. You know, when Michael and Ali brought this idea to me, I, I, I actually came to them and said, hey, I'm looking to move on from Drybar. I love, 
I love what we've been able to do here, but I'm itching for a new challenge. I want to get back into build up and startup mode. And, you know, they reminded me that they'd always had this other idea in the back of their mind. Um, and I actually took a few months to really evaluate whether it was the right thing for me. You know, I wasn't thinking of starting something from scratch. Um, and but but the thing that got me the most excited as I looked into this industry was, you know, the demand, thankfully, is there. Again, consumers, people need and want massage. It's part of part of the majority of Americans' regular routine. Um, and so I knew that there was a huge opportunity there to just make the experience better. But the thing that got me the most excited was creating an employer brand, a place where therapists and our team could come to work every day. And they felt valued and seen for who they are, first and foremost, as human beings, uh, and then celebrated for, you know, what they're doing and their contributions to the business. Um, and when I recognize that, you know, ultimately you need really great, happy people to create a wonderful mm -hmm. experience for guests, that was what got me the most excited. So yes. it is the thing that we look for the most in our operating partners is people who have led teams, who understand people management, because uh, it's, it's the biggest piece of it. Yeah, I mean, and we had um, Monique Maley on last Friday talking about leadership and that being the most important thing is that your folks feel valued yes. because that's where trust lies as a leader. And so I love that you, you know, you're filtering because also you with your business in a box need to create a successful outcome for the whole franchise. Yep. And I also love the Sparty Pants founders at Dry Bar for when you came to them and said, I'm ready to move on. They're like, all right. <laughs> you know exactly what to do with this talented goddess. Woo! <laughs> That's very kind. Yes, yeah, so it's it's an amazing. I feel very very grateful every single day. Yeah. So and and I love that you guys got through the pandemic and still stayed strong. And now we're seeing the silver lining, the opportunities, and can go full bore. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed that you land in Boston for sure. Uh, you know, who wouldn't want to go? I got to just bring up this photo again. I mean, who wouldn't want to go into this gorgeous room right here? Just the colors, everything about it. And the technology aspect where you're just fine tuning what the experience you want without having to have those conversations before you show up. Everybody's ready. And more importantly, the way you can float out when it's all done. I hate that checkout process. I want to take my good vibes, hop in my car or walk home, you know, however that goes. Um, quick question here from Mark, our cheerleader in the crowd here. He's asking, is it membership based at Squeeze? So yeah. do you get like one massage a month? What other perks do you get when you sign up as a delighted customer? Yes. So we are a membership driven business. It's one of the most, you know, important things for our franchisees to consider is just that recurring revenue that they're going to you know, be able to build their business upon from day one. Um, and so, you know, our members benefit from discounted rates. We also have removed a lot of the friction that exists within the experience today. So things like uh, our, our members can cancel at any time. They can pause a membership if they're going to be out of town or they're moving or whatever it is. Uh, guests will be, members will be able to use their benefits at any location across the country with, um, you know, ease across the board and just go in and put your appointments. Um, also, unused benefits roll over. So if you're, again, out of town, you can't get to your massage in one month, it will be there for you. Uh, the next, you can gift a massage to friends. Uh, there's also additional uh, exclusive pricing if you come more than once a month. And the one piece, too, of our business that I haven't, I've alluded to, but I haven't spoken specifically about is uh, for every membership that we sell, we're helping to provide a day of canine support to a person with a disability through our partnership with Canine Companions. They are the Aww. largest provider of service dogs to adults, children, and veterans with disabilities. And... Um, and so, you know, that was another huge part of us building this business and thinking about our positioning in the market is, again, not wanting just to make people feel good, but also to have that do good element. And it's a very special thing. You know, we market it. Absolutely. We know that their dollars are going to a great cause. Our team knows every day when yeah. they walk in the door that they're not only creating an amazing experience within these four walls, but they're also contributing to society and in a meaningful way. So, uh, yeah, there's so good to the membership program. So good. And I know that you're involved with, uh, I mean, <laughs> talented woman like you, of course, you've got your fingers in other pies going on. You 
are involved with what's called OK Humans and the Feel Good Company. Talk a little bit about those two entities with us. Yeah, I sit on yeah I sit on the board of OK Humans. It's led by an amazing female founder. She's the CEO and a licensed marriage and family therapist. And she is really setting out to destigmatize and normalize seeking help for your mental health. Mm. Uh, her whole vision was to take the idea of therapy out of the medical space and bring it into a daily use space. So again, that idea, as I was mentioning earlier, from a real estate standpoint, OK Humans sits right on San Vicente Boulevard in Los Angeles next to a pizza place across from Starbucks. And, you know, we encourage our guests. It has very similar um overarching experience in terms of there's an app that you can book on, but the idea is really to make it accessible and affordable for people to talk to someone, right? We all need wow. active accessible and affordable too, in key words that are uh, not frequently used in the mental health space yeah. at all. And it's a beautiful space too. You know, it's not your, your, grandmother's living room, if you will. It's very oh, modern and a beautiful place. And I love that something fierce because, you know, the therapists are doing the best they can on their limited budget, right? So they're going to find, you know, squirreled away office somewhere that they can you know, meet with folks. You're providing them with a location that's all in with that. Is that exactly. the okay? Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because the, the, Therapists at OK Humans and the massage therapists at Squeeze. What's beautiful about these businesses is it's a it's it's creating a community for them that they otherwise wouldn't have. Right? Their their jobs are quite individual. They're uh, you know specific to to rooms um, with the guest. And so mm -hmm. what our spaces really allow for is them to have community with each other and to continue to hone in on their crafts and and be experts at what they're doing and encouraged by. Uh, you know, other people in the space. So I'm going to, I'm going to include folks, viewers and listeners. Okay. Humans link in the show notes. I think this is an amazing idea. And then talk a little bit about the feel good company. Is it a parent company? What's it's up not with a parent that? company? It's really just leveraging all of the similar resources as dry bar and squeeze. So architect creative, you know, just yeah. really the same brains behind those core functions and supporting the founder who has the expertise in the service. So Christy, again, as the licensed marriage and family therapist, she knows exactly what is necessary to create that experience, but maybe doesn't have, you know, the expertise on creating a brick and mortar or building an app. So that's really what the feel good company Perfect. is. Perfect. Oh my gosh. I love that. And throughout this conversation, Brittany, it's clear that wellness lights you up. So, you know, for other people, something else, but this is like, such a spark of life in you. When did that happen? When did you become you know, so involved with humans' ability to feel good, both mentally as well as physically? Health is wealth, right? Um, I actually, through both my cancer experience and I mm -hmm. also had, um, I had a back injury that, um, that really kind of upended my life about okay. uh, over three years ago now. And I was mm -hmm. traveling, slipped a disc, was in and out of multiple ER rooms. I was 3,000 miles away from home. I actually oh, so was sorry. bedridden for six months. It took me two years to get back to any level of health. And so, you know, I think I realized that, um, that we place so much of our own emphasis on doing and not enough on giving back to ourselves, you know, giving yeah, so many other people. And um, and so I think life is short and I wanted to be in a space that was life giving back to people and, um, you know, and also within like the people industry, I will always go back to that, you know, creating something that is not only uh, improving people's lives through the service, but also being able to do the same for our team. So it was ju really just a oh. beautiful mix of both. It's a wonder. It's a beautiful industry to be in too. It really is because I mean, it's just, you're helping people significantly, those who are delivering the service as well as those receiving the service. So it's just like a full circle experience. Yeah. I'm so happy. And yes, your lived experience has prepared you for this adventure on every single level. And which is why you're able to bring so much to the plate and be part of something that's going to be huge. I mean, you guys are off to a phenomenal start. So now that you've been in the quote, entrepreneurial space. You are a founder. You are an owner. 
And you've been challenged a lot already, significantly. Plus, you've taken on a big, hairy, audacious idea, which is a brick and mortar and a tech company combined. How has entrepreneurship served you both personally and professionally? Gosh, I, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, it's um, it's been such a beautiful experience to be challenged and to grow the way that starting something just forces you to do. I think it also, you know, it's exciting to get up every day thinking that you can make a difference in people's lives. And it's not just as we were talking about through the experience, but for us in particular on the franchising side, you know, giving people the opportunity to own their own business and create this beautiful experience within their community. You know, that's what excites me. That's what I'm really, really looking forward to over the next few years here is, um, is giving people that chance and supporting them all the way through it. I mean, there's, there is no better gift than to help others. And so, you know, for me, that's just, that's, that's like the fire inside me. Oh my gosh. And what I love as an observer, Brittany, is that you are tapping into every inch of yourself mm -hmm. through this experience. And, and folks, this is why you know, founderhood can be so enriching in spite of the challenges is yeah. that you, know, you on whatever level that you want to do founders, you are going to tap into parts of yourself that you will just go say what? And you know that whatever you're doing right now is not serving you in that way at the same time too, because you're in love with the problem you're solving. Like Brittany, you are in love with helping the people whose problem you're solving. And that is what makes the experience so rich and fulfilling. I am so grateful that you came on the show. So, so I could just pull all these delicious gems out of you, the goddess of feel good and do good. Any last thoughts before I pop you into the green room? I thought about it earlier when we were talking, maybe I'll leave everyone with one of my favorite quotes by Seth Godin that says, people do not buy products and services, people buy stories, relations, and magic. And, um, you know, I think that's really just a beautiful thing to remember as you're out there trying to, to change the world, make sure you, okay. you know, you dig real deep and know the why behind what you're doing. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. And yes, Seth Godin, absolutely. We love everything that comes out of that man's mouth. If you're not getting his daily email, sign up for it right now. And hey, Richard, oh, thank you. You're absolutely right. Hashtag health is wealth. And yes, sir. you know that better than anybody because you are focused on the wellness industry as well, Richard. Thanks for tuning in and saying hi. Brittany, I'm going to pop into the green room and wrap up. So delighted that you came in and shared your wisdom and your vision for Squeeze with us today. Thank you for having me. Okay. Oh, my. Oops. On here we go, Andy. Let's do the solo outlook for here. Hi, everyone. Hey, was that not wonderful? And I know I went deep in a lot of categories, but I had a high powered founder who had a lot of rich experience in her background and her lived experience to tap into today. So I'm so grateful that we were able to get those gems from such a leader in the industry and, and, and we'll be able to watch how squeeze unfolds right over the years. And we'll be like, Oh my gosh, we talked to Brittany back in the day. Um, let me tell you who's going to be on the show next. And I'm off for the next week. Yay. 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 Uh, but we have the phenomenal, um, a Yale, uh, Shakur. And this is on Friday, March 11th at 12 PM. And she's the CEO of build.org. And this is a national nonprofit whose mission is to use entrepreneurship to ignite the potential of youth from under-resourced communities and propel them to high school, college, and career success. Build's unique program offers students a four-year entrepreneurship experience designed to reinforce the common core, develop 21st century skills, and motivate student engagement at school. We're going to be so inspired by Ayala's incredible leadership with this national organization that's transforming lives of our youth and creating future founders ready to glow or future corporate leaders ready to glow. So I'm excited. And how do you know? Whenever I post a, new, uh, post a new show, you join the Startup Life Live meetup group. Links are in the show notes. And... I am so excited to hear what you're doing. Please stay in touch with me online. You know, I love to hear your stories, good, bad, ugly, whatever's going on. I'm here to cheer you on everywhere you are until we see each other again. I'm wishing you a delicious day, Mwah, everyone. Take care.